So we had a bit of uh, glitch before starting this presentation, but uh, hopefully uh, we can finish smoothly this time around. So this is uh, a presentation on the, on the domestic benchmarking of the Philippine livestock, dairy, and poultry industries. This was commissioned by uh, the Senate of the Philippines and, of course, NEDA. We did this uh, sometime in 2021, and we completed before the end of that year. So a year after, we are here to present uh, the outputs from our assessments. So the, out the outline of the presentation goes as follows. A bit of introduction, industry profile. Uh, we look at swine, we look at poultry, both broiler and layer. And we look at dairy production in the country. Uh, dairy production, uh, dairy cattle, and dairy buffalo. And then we look at competitiveness, what uh, in the industries we have in the Philippines, and then the challenges that we face. In the end, we try to recommend ways forward to better uh, our local industries and make them more competitive and resilient. So in general, the livestock, dairy, and poultry uh, industries account for a third of the agriculture uh, sector's output. Fiscal government support averaging only at around 1.18 billion, or 1.6% of the total budget of PA from 2009 to 2020, is really very small compared to what we give to uh, crop commodities, particularly to our favored uh, cereal, cereals like uh, rice and corn. Occasional and limited livestock dispersal programs is what we have. And uh, these have not been sustained over the years. There is no broad-based organized competitive structures within the industries that we can see. We were challenged by a very serious biosecurity concern uh, during the previous years and even now. Uh, with African swine fever. So we suffered around 30% loss of swine population in commercial farms, 80% loss in backyard farms due to poor biosecurity practices, affecting around 61,000 farmers who had to suffer from state-led culling of uh, their swine stocks. So eventually, we are seeing reductions in uh, swine population and production in the industry. So we look at uh, benchmarking the Philippine livestock, poultry, and dairy with other countries as well within the, within the region. So we try to give you um, our showing in terms of cost and return structures, comparative advantages, uh, production management and marketing practices for all the industries. And we try to identify and analyze key policies as well as key issues within those industries. For swine, uh, we are seeing that 90% of producers are not commercial, meaning they are backyard in terms of profile. So backyard accounts for 65.7% of local production on average. Swine inventory post around 0.7% general decrease from 2019 to 2020, particularly because of ASF. Swine population is concentrated in Calabar zone, Central Luzon, Western Visayas, Central Visayas, and Bicol. There is an increasing trend for swine production volume from 2018. Luzon dominates. Vismin, Visayas and Mindanao percentages rose in 2019, also because of uh, the ASF production shift. The Philippines uh, import uh, pork products with an increasing trend from 2012 to 2018 as well. For poultry, what we see here is that um, we have commercial farms mostly producing our local supplies. So we have I think the most number of inventory among the smallholders, but uh, in terms of supply in the market of broiler, 
um, broiler products. Uh, we are seeing that the commercial uh, poultry farms are supplying most of what we see. ASF presumed to increase chicken demand, but uh, COVID-19 restrictions also dampened the expectations. Native or improved chicken has the largest share in terms of inventory, followed by broiler at 35%, layer at 19%. There is increasing consumption of chicken meat and eggs. Imports for dressed chicken significantly higher than exports. And backyard farm gate prices are higher compared to what commercial farms actually get. So comparing what you have in terms of broiler production to that of swine production, we see the opposite. For uh, swine production, you have mostly backyard growers contributing to what you have uh, a supply in the market. While for uh, broiler production, you see uh, commercial farms dominating in terms of supplying the local market. For buffalo, carabao, cattle dairy, you see here uh, that, uh, well, we have PCC and uh, the National Dairy Authority looking at milk production, PCC, focusing on uh, dairy buffalo uh, to augment what we have as uh, the production output of your traditional uh, dairy cattle. 70% of local milk production are from small-scale farms. Semi-commercial farms uh, are members of dairy cooperatives. Few to zero commercial dairy farms are in the country as well. Farms uh, predominantly backyard uh, for dairy buffalo um, have higher prices, but lower uh, in terms of uh, actual milk production per day. Dairy cattle comprise most milk production at 63%, followed by buffalo at 35% and goat at 2%. So just also to give you an overview of, of what we have in terms of the value chains within those industries. You see here, uh, in terms of swine value chain, uh, from input, farm production, distribution, processing and retail, and then eventual consumption, together with the key players, or key stakeholders within those levels of the value chain. So it's the same with boiler and layer industries. You have a lot of actors. Uh, Certain levels that probably we can make more efficient in terms of um, transactions and uh, processing outputs. And also for, for dairy. With PCC and NDA at the forefront, uh, technically supporting our local producers. Okay, just to look at evidences as to why we are seeing such profiles in our local industries. We looked at the economic viability of certain um, producers within those industries. An example is what you see in this slide for swine production. Um, we are seeing the dominance of commercial production in terms of uh, profitability or viability. Um, at 139% uh, internal rate of return. Comparing that to what you have with backyard production at 3% and actually a negative net present value for that one. So it's ironic that we are seeing most of the local uh, supply in the market coming from backyard producers. When you see a very lopsided uh, presentation in terms of profitability, when you compare backyard and commercial production. It's the opposite with broiler production. Um, you are seeing here uh, backyard producers having higher IRR, internal rate of return at 36%, compared that to commercial producers at 25%. Both have uh, very good net present values, making them both profitable. But the irony is uh, most of the supply of broilers are coming from commercial commercial farms, commercial poultries, when in fact, in this case, 
we're seeing that the IRR for backyard suppliers are higher or is higher. For layer production, IRR is at 44% for backyard and for commercial, it's 24%. And PV is also positive for both. I think the, the caution in terms of us interpreting the numbers lie on what we captured when we did our data gathering. So we are just seeing slices of uh, um, profitability or viability given certain industry operations. So we just probably captured that section of the, the, the population of local producers who are less efficient in terms of their production processes or practices. Now looking at a 20 dairy carabao milk production, IRR is at 25% and NPV is around 2.07 million. So very uh, viable, very profitable over a 10 year period. The same goes for dairy cattle. As I mentioned earlier, dairy cattle actually produces much more milk compared to what's being produced by dairy buffalo. Uh, the difference is the milk coming from the dairy buffalo is actually getting more in terms of market price. So IRR for this one is 13% with also very positive net present value for a 10 year operation period. So to complement what we did in terms of looking at viability, we looked at current uh, policies related to the local industries, swine, uh, dairy, as well as poultry and uh, layer production. So we have a lot in terms of uh, actual legislations and functional policies from our different departments. So a few of those are what you see here, Food Safety Act 2013, Inspection Code, Food and Drug Authority Act, Animal Welfare Act of 1998, um, and a lot of um, administrative orders from our executive departments. So we've seen the creation of a national task force uh, in terms of controlling animal and born diseases. Uh, we've seen the proclamation of a state of calamity because of ASF. We've seen movements in prices and the government actually trying to, to cut such increase to price control. Uh, we've increased our MAV, we've modified our MFN rates, and uh, we've set up within our communities um, groups that would uh, actually look at ASF and biosecurity, including, for example, the setting up of Bantai ASF in barangays. Of course, we also have contingency planning, uh, led by also our executive department in charge. So. More on our local uh, policy landscape. And then now we center on the key challenges for those uh, mentioned local industries. For swine, market production accounts for most output. And as I've mentioned earlier, but commercial has better productivity and profitability. So I don't know how we are actually seeing the dominance of backyard producers compared to uh, commercial producers when numbers actually very much lopsided viability wise. There is fluctuating price of production inputs, especially for backyard producers as commercial producers actually um, concoct their own feeds in many cases. Land development and zoning changes within our local governments. Uh, there is fast development of agricultural land to residential uh, area conversion affecting large scale farms. Poor consultation on policy decisions. There is growing distrust between industry and government. There are movement restrictions due to COVID-19 as well as ASF. There are inefficiencies in the value chain. Best practice abroad is more on the centralized scheme in terms of slaughter, processing, while we have mostly viajeros, individual uh, entrepreneurs working within the value chains. For poultry, there is high cost of feeds, pushing up cost of production. 
Corn composes 50% of feed volume, but 70% of the actual feed cost. Local corn is uh, more expensive than imported. So uh, our desire to protect the, uh, the local producers is actually resulting to the demise of, uh, well, to, to a negative impact to our con local consumers or users of corn for feed purposes. Inter-island shipping from farm to market throws LGU boundaries drive uh, costs upward. Access to technical support, business advice, extension services, financing mechanisms hinder productivity of backyard farmers. There is inadequate uh, industry database on inventory and demand, including uh, other details as to what's happening within the local industries. There is weak participatory engagement uh, among our stakeholders and communities. For dairy, there is small market uh, demand for locally produced milk. So we are seeing the preference of uh, our local consumers uh, as regards our imported milk products. Logistics and packaging requirements entail large capital investment. There are um, extension problems on information dissemination and technology transfer. Also, as a result of our lockdowns, mobility uh, issues given COVID-19 as well as ASL. Priority, um, we need to prioritize local genetic supply uh, augmentation as well as foundation stocks as there is lower inventory as well as low uh, herd productivity. So we need to benchmark standards for quality and handling as well. The tariff protection as the, the Philippines main trade policy tool uh, for safeguarding, for example, or limiting the increase of input costs for swine and poultry is actually resulting, as I mentioned earlier, um, to issues on higher costs for local producers. Assessment and ways forward. So we've seen consistent growth of livestock and poultry industries under mostly private stewardship. But the pandemic shocks affected sector performance. Um, with swine in particular, being backyard dominated and having less in terms of biosecurity measures. Poultry is commercial in terms of uh, market supply, dairy sector is also uh, a bit commercial with policy support, but failed to actually take off as an industry. So given that we need to continue to incentivize the private sector for them to sustain what we're seeing as uh, private sector vigor, uh, as well as their uh, productivity. Biosecurity measures mostly responsive among commercial farms, minimal or none among smallholder backyard farms. So this is, this is an issue among smallholders, them not being compliant in terms of our required biosecurity measures. So we need to motivate them to contribute to the surveillance and control, fair compensation and enterprise survival support to encourage disclosure of detection and transmission of disease. So we need to actually uh, motivate individuals to disclose that they have diseases within their farms um, that would eventually result to culling. So we need to give them fair compensation for them to actually disclose. For dairy industry to be more competitive against imported products, we need to improve production and processes for more investments in technology and equipment as well. Backyard farming offers livelihood but are prone to operational inefficiencies and regulatory disadvantages. They can benefit from organizing into farmer organizations or membership in accredited. Uh, farmer organizations can be made mandatory to receive government support, linking government policies programs with FOs to facilitate delivery of services and effectively enforce regulations, for example, disease management measures. Equipping LGUs to rationalize land use, organize and build capacities of our farmer organizations and enforce food safety, health, environment, and animal welfare regulations. 
We need to invest on and sustain research and data collection as inputs to policy, animal health and performance, genetic improvement, and native animal development, feed and feeding technology, product and market development, value chains and trade. Pursue standardization of products, particularly processed meat and dairy, their packaging. We need to work on genetic improvement and inventory buildup for swine, poultry, and dairy, including native animal improvement and breed stabilization. And market development may be opened up for private sector participation and partnership as well. We need to augment, strengthen institutional oversight at the industry national levels for responsiveness, proactivity, and sustained commodity systems development. So we are seeing a lot of entry points for augmentation uh, with regard to how the government is trying to make our local industries more productive and resilient to external stresses. And what we're seeing now is um, sort of a chaotic mix of backyard and commercial concerns. But uh, these are riddles, I think, that our uh, decision makers in government or within the bureaucracy are trying to solve and are actually progressing in terms of um, ways forward. I think that's the last uh, slide. Thank you for listening. I give you our next speaker.